you. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Rachel, for, for having me. Um, I'm really excited to be spending uh, the next hour with you all um, talking a bit more about uh, Kroger and more specifically our uh, sustainability commitments and um, initiatives that we have going on and then you know look forward to the Q&A at the end. So um, just as a, a way of introduction, so my role at Kroger is uh, head of sustainability. I've been with the company for about four years now. And then uh, prior to that, I actually worked at Staples, also leading sustainability work. Um, and then and then kind of the pivotal point for me was actually doing a uh, dual master's degree at the University of Michigan. Um, it was a joint uh, MBA and master's of science program um, really focused on sustainable systems. So between the business school and the environmental school. So it was actually a really fun um, um, educational and hands-on way to make this transition into this you know, corporate sustainability space. Um, and then, um, yeah, so that was that was really great. And then, you know, I live in Cincinnati where uh, Kroger is headquartered uh, with my husband and, and my two young kids. So I was also going to say um, apologies in advance if they show up and make a cameo here, but um, I think we're all used to that now by, by 2021. So, um, and then, you know, at Kroger, just high level, my role is really to uh, lead our sustainability work. I sit in a, a central function on our corporate affairs team where I uh, really think about what our strategy should be, you know, what kind of commitments do we need to be making to, to kind of move us to the next level and, um, you know, uh, follow trends and kind of, you know, what, what we should be doing as a responsible company um, and then partner closely with many different people around the business and externally to really make those commitments happen. So um, it's, it's no two days are the same in the food industry, um, especially as a a retailer and a food producer, there is no shortage of sustainability topics for us to be thinking about. It makes it makes the role very exciting too. So, um, you know, for I'm sure you're all <laughs> familiar with Kroger based on where you're located, but um, you know, we we do have a very large um, national presence. So we are in you know the 35 states and the District of Columbia with over 2,700 stores. So in this, you know, the our part of the country, we we know the stores as Kroger typically, but if in other parts of the country, you would know us as you know Fred Meyer or QFC in the Pacific Northwest, or we have Ralph's or Food for Less in California, um, and then very other banners in the in the western part of the country too so we really do have a very large um, footprint and, and presence and scope in, in what we do um, and and um, the things that we work on you know have that same scope and scale when it comes to sustainability um, one thing that not everyone knows about Kroger too is that we have our own manufacturing plants and so we have 35 plants um, across the country who do a whole variety of products. So whether it be um, our 15 dairy processing plants or um, the plants that make like coffee and spices or uh, bakery and you know salads and, and any number of things that we, we produce. And those plants, they produce about 40% of the private label products that we carry in store. So um, we have, you know, the Kroger brand, Simple Truth, um, Private Selection, Hemispheres, and, you know, we have a, a variety across categories. And so it makes it exciting from a sustainability perspective because we often, um, a lot of our commitments are touching both our operations, but also the products that we carry. And I'll, I'll share a little bit more about that later in the, uh, in the presentation. And then, and then finally, we have our distribution network, um, what we call supply chain now. And that's really the distribution centers and then the, the fleet, you know, that um, carries our goods around in our network. And those all have um, sustainability um, impacts and opportunities. So when we think about, you know, what sustainability means to Kroger, this is kind of like, it's probably actually hard to read this, but it's what we call a materiality assessment. And so we did this um, for the first time, like three years ago, where we were refreshing our annual sustainability report. And we really wanted to make sure that we were talking about the right topics in the right amount of depth, you know, in our sustainability report. But this, this exercise is actually really important just from an overall like strategy setting and, and kind of 
um, materiality perspective. So we wanted to know, like, what are the major topics for Kroger as a retailer when it comes to environment and social topics and also governance? Like, how are we running our, our business? Um, so we did this process where we do a lot of stakeholder engagement through like interviews and surveys and, you know, desktop research, etc. to really land on like, what's the right universe of topics? And then which ones are like more or less material to us? So like more important to us and that we should be paying the most attention to and dedicating, you know, more or less kind of resources to. And it's not to say that these are, I mean, these are all important, obviously, but some will have to go up or down the list a little bit. And so when you look at kind of what ended up in that tier one band on the right, these are things like food safety and, and health and nutrition and food waste and packaging climate. Like these are all probably like, you know, very like accessible and like understandable topics. And as a food retailer um, and, you know, we have Kroger Health and we have our own products and, you know, we do a lot of sourcing, et cetera. Like we, we these topics all kind of make sense, you know, why they would be tier one or, or most important. So this is like one way that we're kind of shaping our work and figuring out where we, we should be focusing our efforts. Um, then we have um, another kind of helpful framework when we think about like our sustainability work is the UN um, Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs. And so these are kind of a global framework for, for how companies and organizations can be thinking about their impacts and how to improve those impacts. So, you know, these are a series of 2030 goals. So like within each of these 17 buckets, there's also several targets within those that companies can align with and kind of set targets that are, that are you know, uh, consistent with. So for example, under 12, which is the responsible consumption and production, there's 12.3, which is a, goal, a target to um, cut food waste in half by 2030. So that's a goal that, you know, Kroger is very focused on and kind of very aligned with that goal. And there's other similar targets within these different goals that we also think about and, and kind of have on our radar as we, we manage these um, environmental, social, and governance topics. Um, so as, oops, hold on, lots of narration or <laughs> animation here. So um, this one, you know, when we think about us as like a food retailer and um, a food producer, we, this is kind of this like this concept that we produce enough food to feed everyone on the planet today is very important to us because it's um, all the food that we produce, it has it uses lots of resources like energy and, and water and it may create pollution. Um, and, and sadly, some of it's also going to waste. So we know that, you know, upstream like on farms or in the processing, you know, um, process <laughs> or during, you know, in store, or even at the end of the value chain as a consumer, there's lots of food waste happening, which is just unfortunate because it's it's wasting resources, but then it's also sad because there are a lot of people who don't have reliable access to food and, and experience food insecurity. And so the, this kind of disparity um, is what really uh, motivated Kroger to announce um, a few years ago, I think three years ago, um, what's called Zero Hunger, Zero Waste. So you may have heard of this at, at some point recently, but it's, it's basically our vision to end hunger in our communities and eliminate waste um, in our company or in kind of in our communities by 2025. So, you know, we, we developed this, um, you know, kind of a seven point plan of how we would be tackling this. One thing is, you know, innovation. We have a great um, innovation fund that we launched um, in 2019. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Um, we also set some clear targets. Like we wanted to donate more meals by 2025. So we set this ambitious target to donate 3 billion meals by 2025. We also want to be focused on, you know, what, not just the fact that we're donating, but like, what are we donating? And is that a balanced plate and a balanced kind of um, type of food? We have um, different ways that we engage with policy. Um, we also had an existing goal to be zero waste by 2020. Um, and then also kind of really focused in on food waste and wanting to achieve zero food waste um, as a company. And then one thing that is so true for sustainability across the board is just that it takes collaboration and it takes partnership. So when we launched this plan, we, we aligned with certain key partners like World Wildlife Fund because they were an existing partner on seafood and now we expanded that partnership to include food waste. Um, we are a longstanding partner with Feeding America um, and you know, their food banks and, and diverting food to, to their systems. 
we also have worked with different stakeholders on our innovation fund and getting advice from them. And we do this like on, in different areas too. So, um, you know, we just knew that partnership was key to this, this commitment. Um, and then overall, just this vision of wanting to transform um, communities where we, where we operate as a company. So this is really like our the centerpiece of our sustainability and kind of our broader environmental and social work. And it's it's been an amazing um, plan for us and something that has really had a lot of um, people coalescing around it. And I think it's very clear and accessible to all of our stakeholders, like what we're trying to achieve here. And that's making it even more successful. So I wanted to share just um, a few examples of like how we're bringing this to life in our operations. So, you know, as of um, when we launched Zero Hunger, Zero Waste, our uh, manufacturing plants were already doing amazing work when it came to recycling. So many of them were, were already achieving this vision of zero waste where they were, um, where they divert 90% or more of waste from landfill. Um, but our stores, you know, there's so, there are so many of them and each one is kind of unique and we have a lot of people who work in stores. So we just had an opportunity to improve how we were managing waste in our stores. So to tackle this, you know, my colleague Carrie um, has done an amazing job of engaging um, our store associates and, and leadership. And we've created this essentially a hierarchy where you'll see it on the bottom right there on that poster, but it says sell, mark down, donate and recycle. And so we really try to work through this process when we when we're managing food in our store. So obviously, as a store, as a retailer, like our goal, first and foremost, is to sell the food that we're procuring and, and you know, providing to our um, to our customers. And so first we try to sell, you know, then um, on the life cycle, if we're not if we're not selling something, then we might be able to mark it down. So like in produce or our meat department or other areas like we have um, this like for example this markdown rack we have here on the um produce side so you're selling things at a discounted price then um when we kind of move past the markdown part of the chain then we do donate so we have this long-standing partnership with feeding america and and local food banks where all of our stores have some sort of outlet for surplus food so it gets donated there on a regular basis where someone comes to pick up the food a couple you know two to five times a week and we're making sure that it's getting to um individuals and families in the community who might be experiencing food insecurity. And that's a really successful program. And then finally, if we can't um, donate items, then we ultimately recycle them. So we want, you know, really the goal here is like not ending up in the landfill, but rather recycling the items in some different ways. Um, and, oh, sorry. So I'll tell you about kind of those details in just a sec. So, you know, just kind of sharing some key data points, you know, we are just now finalizing 2020 numbers, but you know, at the end of 2019, we had already exceeded our interim goal to donate 1 billion meals by um, by 2020. So that's amazing. You know, we had 101 million pounds of food that we rescued in 2019. And then we also donated a total of 493 million meals in, you know, in the equivalent of food and, and funds that we've, you know, support through our foundation and other means. So it's amazing. We feel like given our scope and scale, we are able to make a very material difference in the communities um, where we, where we operate. And then as you can see in this chart too, we're kind of slowly over time changing the balance of the plate that we're donating to. So, you know, we can see here that we donate a lot of um, protein already um, and we're starting to shift that a little bit where we are also donating a bit more produce and and other categories as well. So that's all that's all positive um, developments. And then, as I mentioned, when we can't donate things, then we ultimately want to recycle them. So at this point, um, you know, a year ago, seventy seven percent of our stores had a food waste recycling program in place. So that that meant that they can either send food to um, animal feed um, or like farms to be used as animal feed to composting operations or to anaerobic digestion, where the food is converted um, to renewable biogas, which can then be converted to electricity. So this is really making sure that things are not going in the landfill and rather finding more positive uses, you know, through soil amendments or renewable energy or going to another kind of feeding source. So this number has actually continued to increase, which is wonderful. I think we're at around 85% now, um, but you know, firming up that number with the goal really being that every single store in our operations has some sort of end of life um, solution for food waste, which is all really positive. Um, and then just to kind of show like what, what this all means for our footprint. So, you know, when we look at food waste, um, when we first launched this plan, we, um, we, 
worked with WWF to help kind of set our baseline. And so we knew that, you know, when you look at the size of this bar, we know what the size of the bar is, but this is, we really ulti ultimately want the bar to keep decreasing. So we want to make sure that we're producing less and less food waste to start. And then what we do produce, we want to make sure that we're diverting more of that away from the landfill to other uses like um, composting or animal feed. So we're seeing such a positive trend here because the amount of food waste is continues to decrease, the bar is going down. And then similarly, the amount of waste that we're recycling goes up. So it's like at, by 2019, we were at almost 45%, which is awesome when you see that we were at 20 to start. So these are the kind of things that we're tracking year over year, um, which helps us improve as a business. And then also we share it with stakeholders. So external to us so that they can see what we're doing too, and seeing that we're making the right kind of progress in our commitments. And then just kind of overall, when we look at, you know, beyond food waste, we look at our operational footprint. And that's one where we have a goal to be 90% waste away from landfill. And we are currently at, um, I think, uh, little over 80% now, which is great. So, you know, we, we're continuing to do recycling of like cardboard and plastic film and other things that we generate in our operations. So that's kind of a summary of where we are with um, waste. And so, you know, we've I'll just mention quickly too, like we're obviously focused on our own operations, but similarly, we think about the whole value chain, like up the, up the chain and down the chain. So um, as much as we're working in our own stores and plants and other places, we also want to make sure our suppliers are involved. So um, last year we joined what's called 10 by 20 by 30. It's essentially 10 um, retailers and food service providers who have linked up with 20 suppliers each um, to um, and have and challenged them to for them to cut their food waste in half by 20 by 2030. So 10 by 20 by 30. And it's awesome because so many of our suppliers are like so wanting to align with what we're doing. This is such a great vehicle for that, where they can learn from each other. They can learn from uh, World Resources Institute, which is a, another partner who's kind of convening all these um, companies together. So this is a really positive way that we're amplifying our own um, impacts to be more positive across the supply chain. And, and we're really working with a number of companies like Cliff Bar and Danone and you know seafood supplier and produce supplier. So we've tried to get a good mix in there too. And then kind of on the other end of the value chain is um, how we're helping customers reduce food waste because we know that's happening in their homes as well. And so one great way that we've done this is by standardizing date labeling. So date labels, you know, you may have noticed when you buy food at the grocery store, there's like, there can be any number of statements like, you know, produced on or, um, you know, sold on or not sold on, but like so, sell by like, et cetera. So those may not always be super useful. So we're working towards standardizing on either use by or best by. So best by is kind of a quality indicator where, you know, something is probably best consumed um, at a certain point. And then um, uh, use by is like, that's like a safety thing. So you want to make sure that you're, you know, using a product before that date from a safety perspective. So I think that like, and I know other brands are doing this too. So we, we've converted most of our, our private label over to this nomenclature, which is really helpful just to, to make our customers feel more educated as well. Um, and then I'll just mention the Innovation Fund. Um, you know, this is this is awesome. We launched the first round of grants in 2019, where we're again kind of extending our own impact by by fostering innovation. You know, in the supply chain and you know just in the world in general. And here, what I'm highlighting here is like the winners of our first um, round of grants that went out in 2019. Um, just a great combination of companies who are focused on you know food waste reduction and innovation. And then we're currently in. Um, we just closed um, our second round of applications um, just you know earlier this month. So we'll be doing another um, round of funding announcement you know in the in the near future. So just a really exciting way that we're kind of extending our, our work to support further um, innovation and positive um, actions. So switching gears a bit, you know, obviously Zero Hunger, Zero Waste is such an amazing platform and a way that we're transforming communities and our own company. Um, but there are certainly, you know, other sustainable um, impact areas as well that we're focused in. So here I'm just going to highlight a few things in that area as well. So, you know, Kroger, um, we've had 
work going on to reduce our energy impact for years with, you know, our stores, for example, have done tons to um, reduce the amount of energy that they're using when it comes to, you know, electricity and natural gas and, um, you know, like refrigerants, for example. But just last year, we kind of tied all of this together to create a new goal. It's a science-based goal to reduce our company-wide emissions, or sorry, our like operational emissions by 30% um, by 2030 using a 2018 baseline. So this goal is really like driving our progress moving forward into the next decade. It's great. It, it, it will draw on the expertise and the investments from, you know, our retail engineers and our manufacturing plant engineers and those in our distribution centers, as well as those who help us source energy into our various facilities so that we're really tackling this in, in multiple ways. Um, here are just a couple of examples of like what we've what we've done in stores, thanks to our, our you know, dedicated um, engineering team. So we, you know, you, these are these make a lot of sense. Like, you know, you are replacing uh, light bulbs with those that are more efficient. So in that case, you're saving, you know, um, 150,000 kilowatt hours per store annually, which really adds up when you have 2,700 stores. Um, same, you know, and another example is the fact that we're adding glass doors onto open refrigerated cases. So the fact that you're uh, closing off that case means that you're trapping more of the energy inside and then ultimately using less energy to really keep um, the products cold. So um, another great example of how we're making these types of investments. Um, we also have continued to adopt uh, solar power at our facilities. So we have currently, I think, 14 stores, um, typically in like California or Arizona, where um, we have added solar arrays to our facilities. And then in the last couple of years, we actually added um, our largest solar array at one of our distribution centers in uh, California, which now means that we use 50% less grid energy, which is amazing. So that's like 50% of the energy is solar. And then we actually did our first uh, manufacturing plant that went online just about a year ago in April of last year um, at one of our bakeries. So that now offsets about 20% of our grid power. So all really positive developments. And then we also are looking at, um, you know, purchasing more green energy, you know, directly from the grid and, and things like that. So really an exciting opportunity. And I think renewables will really be a key way that we meet our new goal. Um, and then, you know, uh, people don't really think about this, but we have refrigerants. So like we use um, refrigeration in a lot of our operations and they can um, have leaks, you know, leaks or they like release emissions. So we have great ways that our store utility engineers and others are working to reduce refrigerants and kind of, um, you know, further um, achieve our carbon reduction goal. And then water is another area. So again, you know, a lot of our manufacturing plants use water. So they're always thinking of um, ways that we can maybe reduce water and how we like, I don't know, create cottage cheese or, or various products where we're like reuse water and things like that. Um, similarly in our stores, we continue to pilot things and, you know, have better irrigation systems or improve like, you know, bathrooms or, or uh, taps, things like that. And even did a, a project at our Starbucks um, kiosks where the water used to run more like regularly, but now they've created them to turn on um, just as needed. So it's kind of reducing that unnecessary water usage, which is great. Um, and then I'll just mention another kind of water innovation in, in one of our plants. So we had this great, um, you know, a KB Specialty Foods in Indiana, they create lots of like deli salads and things like that. And so they have a good amount of food byproduct that comes out um, in that process. And so we ended up um, creating um, an anaerobic digester technology. So the food waste is digested by microbes and then, um, and then ultimately, you know, as it's being processed in the wastewater, and then that's ultimately turned into renewable biogas, which can then be converted into electricity, which is then returned to the plant and can actually reduce that grid energy demand by 30%. This was really one of those like win, 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 like it saved money. It was good for the environment. Um, it reduced odors, you know, so it was, it was a great example of something that had that like multiple benefits, um, which made it a clear winner for the company to, to implement. And then, um, so we talked about operations and then I will go through just some um, fun like packaging and, and product related um, initiatives that we have going on. Cause I think those are also really relatable as a consumer, you know, you think about the products that you're buying every day in store. 
and just as a plug, the cookies shown on the slide are really good. <laughs> My daughter has a milk allergy, so I'm, I'm all over these. They're really good. <laughs> um, so one key area that um, we, a lot of people care about these days, I'd say is, is sustainable packaging and just wanting to make sure that the products that they're consuming um, have, um, you know, are kind of reducing the impact of the packaging. And I know folks are very concerned about plastic and plastic pollution and, and so forth. And so we, we recognize this and um, we set goals last year that are really um, shaping our work again into the next decade where we're um, trying, the goal is really that all of the, our private label products, which are, you know, like I mentioned, like Kroger and Simple Truth and, um, you know, private selection, etc. We want all of that packaging to be 100% recyclable, compostable, or reusable by 2030. So certainly an ambitious goal. I mean, we, some of it already is recyclable or it's somewhat recyclable, but there are certainly categories where you cannot currently recycle those at curbside. So it's it's a great goal for Kroger and I think many other brands who are setting similar goals to really um, try to move the needle on what we're doing in this area. Another thing that we're really striving to do is increase recycled content because we know when we kind of create the demand for the recycled material going into our packaging, it's like stimulating the overall recycling loop um, and creating a demand for those uh, materials to be recycled in the first place. And then we want to make sure that we're reducing unnecessary packaging um, where, where that's um, possible as well, just so that we're not creating, you know, extra air in a package or putting something on it that's just not really necessary. And our, so we're working closely like with me and our sourcing team and the, our brands uh, private label team to really think about how, how we achieve this goal knowing that it's going to take some time and some innovation and a lot of change, but it's, um, it's great to see that this is something that my, me and my partners are really uh, coalescing around and really digging into. Um, you know, one thing that's really exciting as a customer is the Simple Truth Recycling Program that we launched. So TerraCycle is a company that's, they're really in the business of creating um, recycling solutions for hard to recycle items. So they have this actually like a zero waste box concept where you can get a box and pretty much put anything you want in there for recycling, which is really cool because like in theory, a lot of things are recycling, recyclable, but not everything can be recycled readily. So that's a really cool thing. Um, and, and so we've partnered with them on this recycling program where students or someone at home or like coworkers at a workplace can um, sign up as like a collection point they can collect any simple truth, um, flexible plastic uh, packaging. So things like you see kind of in the in the photo here, but you know, like cheese, shredded cheese bags or sliced cheese bags, um, you know, um, trail mix bags or pet food bags, like anything that you just can't currently recycle at home. That's like a flexible plastic packaging um, can be mailed back easily um, to TerraCycle for recycling. So super cool, you know, it's free to the, to the end user, the, the customer. So I really encourage you to, to check that out if you are a regular uh, Simple Truth uh, consumer. So that's a great way that, you know, until these things can be recycled at the curb, we can find interim solutions. And we do also offer um, a recycling program in our vestibules. So um, it's more of like a plastic film recycling. So if you have like a leftover single use uh, plastic grocery bag that needs to be recycled or, um, you know, the film on like a, a like a case of like um, single use plastic bottles or, um, a dry cleaning bag, like those things can actually be brought back to our stores for recycling too. So we like to provide different uh, solutions to make our customers um, more sustainable if that's what they're looking for. And then these are just some examples of the types of products that can go in there. So really encourage you to check it out. You can look for it either on the TerraCycle website or you can look on Kroger.com. There's a section about simple truth and um, the details are there too. So you can easily you know, understand how it works and print off your label to mail back your package. We also enjoy something called that how to recycle as part of our packaging commitments, where this is a label that you can look for on your products, where if you, um, you'll see there's different versions of this label, but it will tell you like how to properly um, recycle something. So, you know, is it like rinse it or take, you know, don't recycle the lid or you can only recycle the box, you know, for the bag or, you know, for cereal, for example. And, and so you look for that. We are rolling that out slowly, but I know a lot of other brands have adopted it too, as you can see on this 
page. And so I realized this is a great kind of um, educational tool for how customers can properly recycle. And we, we joined up with How to Recycle last year. Um, and then um, you may have heard that we phased, you know, committed to phase out of single use plastic bags. We were really the first retailer to do that. And um, we, um, this is such an amazing commitment. You know, we are still working through what we think the right solution will be. We, we recognize that it's not like a, maybe like a one size fits all and that this is complicated. We don't want to just switch from one thing to something else and feel like maybe there's unintended consequences to that and, and kind of also recognizing that um, Kroger is very large. So like any change we make has a large impact. So we are looking through kind of what the right solution is, but something that we are doing now is called, um, it's called the Beyond the Bag um, initiative. And it's, it's part of a consortium of retailers, including Kroger and like Walmart and Target and CVS and others who are working together to really find um, sustainable alternatives to the single use plastic bag. So we um, led a, an innovation challenge, if you will, where like many solutions um, submitted ideas for alternatives. And then I think it was nine winning solutions were identified that the retail partners are now starting to, to pilot, you know, later on um, this year. So it's great. It's looking at like innovative materials or, you know, are there like reusable options that we should be thinking about? And, and then, you know, what, how do we enable those for our customers and, and so forth. So really exciting. And it's a great example of the kind of collaboration that can happen within the sustainability field. So super exciting and definitely keep an eye on that um, in terms of what's the solutions that are being identified and like how retailers are um, bringing those to life in their stores. Um, another really exciting initiative is Loop. You may have heard of Loop. It's a reusable packaging platform. Um, it's currently its own standalone e-commerce website um, where consumers can, can buy um, package, you know, products in reusable packaging. Um, once it's consumed, then it can be returned um, to Loop or or in our case, it will be returned to a Kroger store um, where the packaging is ultimately brought to a cleaning facility and then and cleaned and then refilled for reuse. So it's a really innovative idea, I think, to bring this kind of in a, in a retail environment. Uh, Kroger is the exclusive grocery retail, retail partner for Loop, so we'll be bringing um, a pilot to one of our divisions a little bit later this year, so super exciting to be having that kind of come to life in within a store, um, so stay tuned for that. But this is just another way that we're kind of bringing innovation um, to the table as part of our, you know, zero waste um, commitment. And then I'll just lastly just touch on a couple of things like sourcing. So we've talked a lot about like packaging, obviously a very big impact area for Kroger. We also care about what's going in the packaging. So what's what's in our product. So um, one area that I work closely on is our sustainable seafood commitments. So this is one where, um, you know, we have goals for, you know, in our seafood case where we want 100% um, of the, the seafood to be sustainable by, by 2020. We are well on our way to this goal, but we'll likely be extending it just so that we um, can make sure that we're getting to 100. Um, and this is work that we're doing with World Wildlife Fund. So um, they're a wonderful partner. They provide excellent guidance to us and really are helping us um, find ways to support fisheries that are making this positive progress, um, you know, towards certification and and so forth. So that's that's like an example of what we're how we're trying to be more um, sustainable. We also animal welfare is another you know topic that's very um, relevant to us. We um, we don't really like process any of our own meats or anything like that, but we do sell meats in our stores, and so we want to make sure that we are kind of responding to our stakeholders and what their their needs are and interests are. So we do have um, commitments in the area of cage-free eggs and also creating um, you know, pork supply chains where those are um, free of gestation crates. Um, and so these are goals that we're, you know, we're working on and kind of demonstrating the type of commitments that we're making as a company just to, to make sure that we're protecting um, you know, animal welfare in our supply chain. 
And then just another one to highlight, I know people have probably heard of the issue of um, deforestation specifically in, in tropical regions. So we've had a long-term commitment to source um, sustainable palm oil in Kroger's products or, or private label products. And then last year we really extended this so that we would cover palm oil and soy, beef and paper in our, in our private label products. So this is a, another 2030 commitment um, that, we're, that we're working on and kind of developing our roadmap for and, and you know, working our way towards that commitment, but just wanted to highlight it because I know those are, that is kind of a, a topic that we continue to hear more about as a consumer. And then just a couple of uh, final examples. So we are partnered with uh, Fair Trade USA. Super exciting. Um, I think at this point we actually have like more than a hundred uh, Fair Trade Fair Trade certified Simple Truth products. So um, you know, thanks to when we you know certify these products, that means that we are purchasing uh, certified ingredients, and then we pay a bit of a premium on those, um, so that and then the extra money goes to these community development funds. So the communities that we're sourcing from ultimately um, have some oversight over that fund so that they can invest in like what, they, what feels meaningful or impactful for their community. So it could be like a school feeding program or um, you know, some sort of new um, you know, irrigation system or something that improves their lives in, in, in different ways. And so really positive um, and, and this number just continues to grow. And I, I don't know, I think we still are the leading kind of private label brand with fair trade and it's, it's great. It's great for the communities, it's great for the environment, I think, and our customers really like it too. I think fair trade is a very like recognized, um, you know, logo and certification. And then as kind of part of this, we did commit um, some, our Simple Truth Band to the Global Sustainable Coffee Challenge. So that's a great way that, again, like multiple brands are making this commitment where they're creating the world's first 100% sustainable supply chain. So all the companies that commit, you know, they, they say that I'm going to um, source 100% um, you know, fair trade, Rainforest Alliance, or both, you know, um, coffee in our, in to like something bigger again. Um, and then the last one I'll highlight is plant-based. So I know this is kind of a growing trend where customers want um, items that might they might feel like they're better for their health or uh, better for the environment. And so this is one where like Simple Truth in particular has been really growing this line to offer a variety of plant-based meat alternatives. I know we're including this more in the meat department, which is great. So it's like right at that decision point for the consumer, they can pick, you know, traditional meat or a plant-based alternative. And we're expanding this assortment across the store. So not just for our brands, but kind of a national brand approach. Um, and then I'll just highlight, if you want to read more about all of Kroger's sustainability work, one great place to do that is our um, Environmental, Social and Governance Report or ESG report. So this is a photo from last year's cover, and then we'll, we'll do our next one in um, early July, typically is when we go live. Um, and then we also have, um, you know, Kroger.com, we have like a Zero Hunger, Zero Waste page where you can, you know, download um, resources to, um, you know, about like recipes that use, you know, food that's like food waste, you know, like trimmings or, or things like that. So that we have great recipe ideas, you know, how to use leftovers and things like that. We have cool graphics about um, how to like store food in your fridge so that you're reducing food waste, like preserving the food longer. And we have info about our like plastic recycling program. So really encourage you to check those out too, because I think those are really fun for our customers to engage with. Um, so I think that's it. I'm sorry, I feel like I rambled at you for a long time, <laughs> but happy to answer any questions that you might have about um, our sustainability programs. <laughs> Lisa, I see you're getting some claps from the audience. So I think that um, no rambling, it was all amazing. I know I learned a lot. Um, if anybody has questions, feel free to ask now or you can drop it in chat and I can relay it to um, Lisa. Um, I had a question. Uh, first of all, you did a great job. I really learned. I learned a lot. Um, I oh, didn't good. <laughs> know it was doing so much. Um, but I've noticed that, that a lot of these efforts tend to make products more expensive. Have you guys noticed that there's been a drop in buying these specific products or because there's now more options, has it, has it increased? 
Yeah, I mean, I think the adoption of those products, um, I don't think it's dropped. Like, I think, you know, like our Simple Truth brand, which really started as like a, cl a clean brand, like a free from brand, but it's kind of evolved to become more of our, like one of our sustainable brands in terms of, you know, using fair trade and sustainable coffee, et cetera. Um, I mean, the sales of Simple Truth continue to grow year over year. So I take that as a, a positive trend. Um, I know that we have our natural and our, like kind of an overall natural and organic assortment and that one um, grows as well. And I know we just, you know, that's gone to the point where, you know, we've, used to be maybe like a little store within a store, but now that's become like integrated where like if you shop in a lot of Kroger stores, like natural and organics, like in each of the aisles. So you really make it easy to get to it. And I think that helps, you know, with adoption. Um, and I know like we, you know, we, we try to like be affordable as a, as a private label brand too. Certainly, I think sometimes like the price might go up a little bit for for various attributes, but I do think there's also um, a lot, you know, and some customers will still have like an appetite, like they're okay to pay a little bit more sometimes for um, something that is more sustainable or where they feel like that in increase is, you know, worth whatever that change is. Lisa, I don't know if you can see the comments, but Maddie said, thank you for answering the question in the comments. Oh box. yeah, thanks. <laughs> I did not see that. Any other uh, questions? Hi Lisa, uh, Shane Tether, I'm the university sustainability officer. So thank you so much hi, for your presentation. You? I'm doing well, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, I applaud the goals and um, curious about opportunities for students to get involved with sustainability at Kroger. Internships or, you know, working for local stores or the headquarters. Mm -hmm. um, just really curious what the opportunities are. Yeah, I mean, I wish I had like lots of <laughs> internships to uh, to provide. Um, we don't like, we, we do on occasion have, um, you know, intern interns in our group. Um, we don't, I don't know that we have an opening like at the moment or, and, and we don't have a current opening on our sustainability team, though it is something that we continue to think about internally, um, you know, in terms of um, increasing the size of our, our team, which is um, lean at the moment. Um, but I think, you know, what I think is cool about um, like zero hunger, zero waste, for example, is that I think it's um, something that um, associates in any role can really feel like they have some like ownership of or they feel passionate about it. Mm -hmm. um, I know like, you know, in some store roles, like you know, you, they might have um, some impact over like our donation program or, or, or things like that. So I do feel like there are ways to touch the work, even if it's not like a direct um, role within our, our department. And I think that's true for various roles. Like I know when I work um, in my function, like I work closely with our brands team and I connect with our utility engineers and I work, you know, like there's all different ways. So I mean, it obviously depends on the role, but I think even if someone comes in and is like at an entry level, I feel like it's it's valuable to say, hey, like once I'm in, like how how can I connect to this work? So and I think that's kind of true for a lot of sustainability roles in general. Is just that you, um, it may not be that you can come in and be like the person with sustainability in your title, but it's helpful to come into a company and um, maybe you're you have a little bit of a different focus, but you try to like partner or find ways to influence the sustainability work, like from a more like traditional role as well. Great. Yeah. Um, Rachel, I have two follow-ups on that if there's mm -hmm. time, but I, I want to give seed time for the other students who are on the line if there are questions. So, Thank so you. first, first follow-up would be, um, we're interested in maybe a summer internship program that would be based out of UK, but uh, placing students with community partners or university partners. And so, would love to explore the possibility of Kroger being one of those placement opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second would be, you know, I think we would be wide open to being a partner in any research that was needed to assist with furthering the goals you've established. And that would be something mm -hmm. that our network of faculty, um, I think, would be interested in engaging with. And I'm happy to be a point of contact if that is of interest yeah. to you or the corporation. Yeah, no, thank you for offering that up. I mean, I know there are definitely a lot of like 
even, I mean, current topics or even emerging topics that it, it would be um, interesting to probably get some additional help with or like some way, you know, that um, it's like a mutually beneficial experience. I know when I was um, in grad school, I did several projects with companies and I feel like that kind of hands on experience is very helpful, you know, for kind of getting that like in real life, you know, perspective of um, being at a company and what it means to drive sustainability. I always try to wait a few seconds just to see if we've got another question or of course. I always try to like, I always try to just wait a second because I just like to jump right in. Um, so are, if there are any other questions, just feel free to drop them in the chat. If you think of a question later, I'm gonna drop my email in the chat and I'm happy to relay the question um, to our Kroger team if it's specific to Kroger. Um, so I'll drop my email in the chat now. Um, but thank you all so much for dedicating your time today. Um, Lisa, we really appreciate you joining us. David, always appreciate you being here as well. Um, David, did you um, want to hop in really quick and say anything? Um, sure. Uh, well, thanks for, uh, well, Lisa, fantastic job on, on the presentation. I think, you know, um, so I've been with Kroger, well, almost 25 years. I can't believe it. Um, <laughs> and I started, actually graduated from UK in 98. And I started working at the... Uh, the Euclid Avenue store as a cashier, as a part-time job while I was in school. Um, and, you know, our CEO, who I'll just plug, is also a Kentucky graduate, uh, Rodney McMullen. But he likes to say, you know, Kroger is a place where a lot of people, they might come for a job, but stay for a career. And that's kind of the story that that best embodies my career. Um, but one of the things I guess I'll, I'll say is the change that I've seen in the company and especially I would say over the last 10 years, mm -hmm. um, just in terms of the responsibility and the ownership that the, the folks in this company are taking about all the things that Lisa talked about and, and being a, a good host for this planet. I, I, I think that it's been embedded in almost everything we do. Um, you know, Andrea is my, our counterpart here and she couldn't make it on the call, but she's a category manager for Kroger in her category is water. And I would tell you what she would probably say is as she manages that category, that's all part of it, you know? So partnering with uh, manufacturers that can um, provide, you know, the packaging that we are asking for and being responsible. So I, I, I think for me, you know, you may, asked earlier about some of the opportunities. I think there are, there are so many jobs within Kroger that have those parts of it embedded into the role and something we all think about. So I'm, I'm proud that it's something that we are all talking about all the time. Uh, and for, for Prover, it's been a huge shift over the last 10 years to, to go that direction. So um, yeah. it's nice to hear um, you know, all the things that we're doing and that we're, we're not stopping there and we're continuing to, to push the boundaries. And when, when I heard Three years ago, I think I was in a company-wide meeting about the zero waste, zero hunger goal. I, I couldn't believe they would go out and make a statement like that, but that's pretty bold and pretty mm -hmm. powerful. So anyway, I appreciate everybody's time. Yeah, no, and I would, I would echo what you just said about um, it being kind of more and more integrated and in how people just think about their job day to day, because I was just in a meeting with someone else, like me and a category manager in produce, we were doing like a, you know, we had a materiality assessment that we did. So I returned the favor. So when other companies are asking us to like, you know, provide input to their materiality assessments, um, I, I'm glad to do that. So we were with a produce supplier and like, it was great. It was like my counterpart in produce was like seeing the same things that I was, but they were strictly from like his perspective, you know? So it's, it's really cool to see how these topics are really coming to life, you know, whether you have sustainability in your title or not, you know, I think um, like just consumers and suppliers are caring more about sustainability as, as is Kroger. So um, it's all nice how it's kind of aligning and just becoming uh, top of mind for more and more people. It's really positive. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah.
Thank you both Lisa and David. David, I knew you'd have something great to add and I love hearing the discussion back and forth between um, our two Kroger leads here. We just thank you all so much for your time. It's so good to see that sustainability is top of mind um, for so many people um, and, and definitely for some for a company like Kroger to, to really be taking all of these steps. We just um, as humans appreciate it, we, we appreciate your time today. Um, and thank you so, so much. And um, students, if you have any questions, my email is in the chat. So you can just shoot me an email um, and I will get it to the team. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.